Hello, welcome to episode two of the Jocelyn Gould Show. Um, if you are enjoying what you see, I would love if you would subscribe to the channel. It helps us keep it going. And we're going to get things started off um, with a tune that I wrote. This is called Change of Plans. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> One, two, one, two, uh, 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 uh. Thank you. 
Oh, shit. oh man! Fuck! I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, we're keeping that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is all about you know. This is a real show. It is. It is, it is. This is not. This is, <laughs> this is not scripted. <laughs> this is not oh, scripted. Right. All right, that was my tune, Change of Plans. That's actually on my first album that came out in 2020 um, called Elegant Traveler. Um, yeah, that was my, my first record. Um, all right, so we're on episode two of this thing, and episode one was really, really fun. It's been so cool to see the response, the comments, just everyone... Um, uh, taking part in the show has been so fun. So thanks so much for watching. I wanted to actually take a second to introduce <laughs> these musicians like properly. Um, last time I just uh, whizzed through that and just assumed everyone knows these cats as well as I do. So um, let's start over here on the drums. Um, I am Kevin. This is Kevin Waters. Hello. <laughs> I've known Kevin, what, like 10 years? Yeah, that's good. Really We've known each other for 10 years now. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Kevin moved up to oh, Winnipeg from Ohio in 20... 2013, summer. Holy crap, oh, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Um, and we played in like... <clears throat> Everything I don't know <laughs> all the time. Totally. <laughs> yeah, whatever we could. Basically. Totally. I feel like I like learned how to play music yeah, with you. Yeah, we definitely mm -hmm. did that together. Yeah, we played in so many bands all over, um, all all styles. Yeah, all kinds of shit. Yeah, <laughs> really everything. Um, Good time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So when I was putting this together, I couldn't think of anyone anyone better to ask. So yeah, Kevin Waters, everybody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we've got Julian Bradford, who um, I've actually been getting a number of messages about people saying, is that Julian Bradford? In your band on bass? Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not ridiculous. <laughs> um, Julian, I've known since I started going out to watch live music, basically. You've been on the scene forever. Right. Um, Julian and I actually have the same birthday, yes. June 9th. We're mm -hmm. both Geminis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's very exciting. And we've played together a ton. And Julian's just the coolest, coolest guy. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and yeah, and this is Will um, over on the piano. Will is working double duty today playing yeah. piano mm -hmm. and doing videography for this. Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> uh, I guess you can say that. <laughs> if I screw anything up, I don't want to be blamed for it. <laughs> <laughs> get negative YouTube comments. No, but, no, they'll only you know, be great the comments. The white balance is off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess we can just delete them, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I've known Will also since I got on, since I started going to see live music. And um, we've played together probably more than, I don't know, any other pianist that I've played with for sure. But yeah. All right. Cool. Let's answer some questions. Um, okay, so everyone just gave so many great questions when I asked for questions yesterday. It was so cool to see everybody's questions. I wish I could answer them all. Um, so I uh, wrote a, a few down, and I'll just kind of randomly randomly pick a couple. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, I liked this one. Somebody asked, hi, Jocelyn, what are your top five favorite jazz guitar albums? This is Larry Tam Tamanini, Tamanini, who um, is, you know, a, a long time 
commenter and supporter of, of my music. So thank you, Larry. And top five jazz guitar albums. That is a very hard question. Um, I think my top five, if I had to name five, I would say definitely Smoking at the Half Note. Uh, Wes, yes. <laughs> Iconic band, uh, Paul Chambers on bass. Wes Montgomery on guitar, Wynton Kelly on piano, and Jimmy Cobb on drums. Um, uh, that record really has been just so massively influential uh, to me. Um, Grant Green, the complete quartets with Sonny Clark, for sure. Those are incredible records, and I started listening to them very early on when I was studying, so they're just kind of like very... Um, you know records that you've listened to for a really long time and they just get uh they become really special those records are really really records i've listened to a ton um joe pass i remember charlie parker which we were talking about last episode uh that solo guitar is the solo guitar record that i've studied the most and it's just been so influential to me Peter Bernstein, Signs of Life. Um, that's a 19, yeah. <laughs> we love that album. <laughs> that's a uh, 1994, Peter Bernstein, um, uh, Christian McBride, Brad Meldow, and Greg Hutchinson. Just an unbelievable album that I listened to. I've listened to that album a ton. And I'll finish my five with Kenny Varell. Um, I'm actually going through starting a project right now. I decided I'm starting a really long tour, um, 10 weeks, a 10 week tour on Thursday. I'll be all over the US, so a few dates in Canada as well. Um, and I've decided to do a project. I want to listen to at least Definitely all of Kenny's leader albums in that time, but also as many albums that he played as a sideman on as well. I just want to do a deep dive into Kenny over the next couple months. Um, but definitely one of my favorite Kenny Burrell records is Bluesy Burrell. It's so his sound and just his sound is so beautiful on that record. I love it so much. Do any of you have any favorite jazz guitar albums? Oh, shit, you just named like the few of mine, that Signs of Life and the Smoking and the Half Note is, that's the shit, like that's like, I mean that's what I listen to to get ready to even play with you, like that's literally what I listen to is the Signs of Life and that stuff, oh. you know, like, I mean, it's the sound, you know. Totally. <laughs> totally. That's the sound. Totally. I really like uh, Golden Hour and, and uh, <laughs> Sonic Bouquet yeah. and uh, awesome. Elegant Traveler. Those are probably my top three. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> those are my three, top three, too. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's more, tons, tons more, tons more records to be named, but those were five that I thought of right off the top. Um, let's see, let's do one more question and then play another tune. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm just gonna randomly pick one. Um, uh, here we go, here's a, a different one. What do you think about when you are soloing? From the real, Mundbinder. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce. The real what? <laughs> Mundbinder. <laughs> it's spelled the real M N D B N D R. Mundbinder. Mindbender. Something bender. Mindbender. Mind Mindbender. The real mindbender. Mm. Brilliant. Um, what do you think about when you're soloing? Well, it's a question for oh, you. Yeah. But no, I'm saying I usually try to sing the melody if I know it. Mm -hmm. if, I can, if I know it, I try to attach it to the melody, because if I don't, I'm going to lose myself. And if I don't really know the melody, then I, I try to remember like the, how the phrase, like how the form is broken up, and then try to orchestrate through the form, which is more, it's not really rooted in a whole lot other than, than just the form. So it feels less musical to myself, but it does help me stay on track. So. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. 
for me, I'm when I'm. It depends how well I know the tune, to mm-hmm. be honest. Um, if I don't know the tune very well, then I'm thinking about what are the chords, and just trying to remember what the chord changes are, so that I can play, uh, so that I can make the changes. Um, if I know a tune very, very well, and the harmony is, um, you know, back in my brain, um, and I, I don't need to think about the harmony, which is the goal, is to just have it be automatic, that you, you know it, you don't need to be like, okay, it's F7, B flat major, etc. Then I can focus on trying to play musical things and try to, trying to build solos, um, have, have my solos go places, um, have a solo arc, be musical. Those are the types of things I try to think about when, when I know the tune really well. But if I don't know the tune really well, I'm thinking about chord changes. Um, mainly trying to, I'm not really trying to, th- I'm trying not to think in a sense. I mean, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the better you know the song, the less you have to think, and the more the more you've uh, time you spent mastering your instrument, the less you have to think too. So it's kind of like I don't really want to think much at all. Um, so if I have to think, it's yeah, like the chord changes, the form, and then interacting with mm-hmm. the other musicians as well. Just kind of reminding myself to like be doing this with people in the room yeah. <laughs> to actually have a conversation with people yeah, as opposed to just kind of, <laughs> totally it's kind of the same as you know having a conversation mm-hmm. you don't really think about what you're uh i mean you kind of think about it but you don't directly think like what word you're going to use mm-hmm. you just kind of it just comes out you think about what thought you want to have and then the words kind of form themselves as they're coming out in a way it's kind of like that. What yeah. about you? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the same for me. Yeah. Unless, yeah, like if I'm not that familiar with the tune, then I'm usually hearing, trying to hear the melody, I guess. But yeah, ideally, nothing. I'm trying to think of nothing. Just let it kind of flow, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to play another tune now. This is a tune that I wrote. We're going back to Elegant Traveler a little bit for these couple of tunes. My first record, um, one of Will's favorite jazz guitar albums. It's, my third, it's probably my third favorite. <laughs> third favorite? <laughs> um, this is called Kindling. It's, um, it's a tune I wrote. I was sort of thinking about growth and how everything starts small. Um, So I called this tune Kindling. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
All right, that was kindling. I wrote that in 2019 in my bedroom in Washington Heights in Manhattan. Um, I was getting ready for my first album and doing a ton of writing, so that's where I wrote, where I wrote that tune. Um, all right, you want to uh, take charge of these questions? Sure. Possibly pass them off. <laughs> you just go in order or pick random ones? I think just pick whatever, whatever seems interesting to you. All right, here's an epic question. Ryan Holloway asks, Ryan Holloway 8 asks, <laughs> um, what helps you fully unleash your creativeness when composing? That is a very epic question. <laughs> ah, what helps fully unleash my creative, creative? Uh, your creativeness. Create, creativeness. Yeah. Um, this is actually something that I was thinking about, um, the, talking about yesterday in, or two days ago in a master class I was doing at, um, here in Winnipeg. We were talking about composing and I was saying that what I like to do when I'm writing is sometimes I think I get like, um, uh, like I f put pressure on myself to have to write music that sounds a certain way. We were sort of also mm. talking about this mm. just earlier. Or I'll feel like um, music that I'm writing is expected to sound a certain way or I'm expected to write certain types of tunes. And I've started sitting down and giving myself time and saying, okay, for the next hour, you're going to write music that no one's ever going to hear. You're never going to share this with anybody. Um, and so I find when I write kind of thinking that no one's ever going to hear it, I start to write, I think, from my truest place. Um, and sometimes I'm like pretty surprised by what I, by what I end up coming up with. And then I can decide later if, you know, anyone's actually going to hear it or not. But at the time, no one's going to ever hear it, so it doesn't matter. It's um, just just writing for the sake of writing. Yeah. 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 Anyone yeah. else? Um, I mean, I could answer for me. Yeah. Um, it's kind of boring, but like just creativity just comes through consistency and just doing it every day mm -hmm. and then it starts to come out gradually you know if I haven't been doing it for a while nothing really comes out at first and then it gradually starts to come out through doing it every day and going for walks and stuff like that that also helps yeah I love that um you want another one yeah. another question yeah let's do it no another question yeah, yeah. Curtis Noah said, asks, <laughs> are you really the head of the quickie mark? <laughs> <Outrageous. laughs> That's it. Uh, shout out to our friend Curtis. Thank you for the question. The answer is yes. <laughs> we are the heads of the quickie mark. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. <laughs> um, okay. But now for a serious question. Um, one more for now. Taylor Hatch asks, in terms of guitar technique, what helps you not have tension when you're practicing? Mm. Um, great question, Taylor. So I've worked on this a lot, and it's, it's really hard um, when we're playing not to kind of get excited we want things to happen we want things to you know we want to sound a certain way get a certain idea out so for me um i find tension really ri tends to rise over time in my shoulders i tend to start to get tight and in my arms i start to like tense them um so 
the way I hold my instrument, which a lot of people have also asked about, um, partially is to create uh, just like the ergonomics so that I can really relax. The idea is that I want to be able to sit up straight um, and have my instrument just be ready to play without without me even doing anything with my arms. I don't have to be touching it. I don't have to be like using muscle to hold it up. Um, I should be able to sit up straight, ready to play. And then your arms just go to the instrument. It's really nothing more than that. Um, so you approach the way I hold the, the guitar, which a lot of people have commented is unique. The reason I do this is so that I can, it has other sound reasons for sound and, and technique as well, but also just so that I can have no tension. So um, I will sit with my instrument. I wanna have really good posture and just bring my, my hands to the guitar. And then I'm looking for no real bending in the wrist. You know, sometimes if we're, it's sometimes I'll end up finding my hand is like this, and it's just really hard to play so anything. It's hard to, to be fluid with your playing when your joints start locking up. So you really want just um, kind of straight wrists, uh, loose joints. You bring your, your hand up to the instrument, and that's the place where you want to start from. Same with this, this arm you want. You are trying to keep everything loose, everything, uh, you know, um, everything tensionless. And then often when I'm playing, the tension starts to creep in. So it's also, we were also, I feel like we talked about every, all of this stuff like before this episode. Um, I have to constantly remind myself to just let go of tension while I'm playing. So I try to like get into habitual check-ins while I'm playing. How, how is my tension? Am I breathing also? I have like a bad habit of holding my breath when I play. Am I breathing? Is, am I, you know, just loose? And when I am, I'm able to play better. That's um, absolutely for sure. And I think the more we train ourselves to do these check-ins while we're playing, the more it will just become a, a habit that we're playing from um, a place of not being really tight. Um, yeah, that's how I, how I do that. Wanna do another tune? Let's do another tune. Okay, so we are gonna play a standard now. Um, this is by George Gershwin, beautiful tune. This is called Someone to Watch Over Me. Hope you enjoy. There's a saying old says that love is blind Still I'm often told seek and ye shall find so I'm going to seek a certain lad I've had in mind, looking everywhere, haven't found him yet. He's the big affair I cannot forget. Only man I ever think of with regret I'd like to add his initials to my monogram Shepherd for this 
There's a somebody I'm longing to see I hope that he turns out to be Someone who watch over me I'm a little lamb who's lost in the woods I know I could always be good To one who watch over me Though he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome to my heart, he carries the key. Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, how I need someone who watch over me. Won't 
you tell him please to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, how I need someone who watch. Someone to Watch Over Me by George Gershwin. Um, all right, let's do like one more question and then one more tune. Sounds good. That's why we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here. Answer questions and play tunes. Um, okay, let's see. Let's get one that's a little different. Mm hmm. Hmm, okay. Um, oh, where'd I, where'd I see that one? Oh yeah. Uh, Danielle Emberly is asking, how is international travel with that 16 B going in these extreme <laughs> winter temperatures? <laughs> great. That's a great question. Danielle. If you don't realize we're in, uh, Ar the Arctic. <laughs> we're in, we are very, yes. Uh, it's nice in here. Um, it's very cold outside. We're in Winnipeg. Uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're at No Fun Club Studio. Um, but it is cold outside. It's January. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so that's a really interesting question, traveling with uh, this 16B. Um, I mean, it's a piece of wood, so it does change with climate. I have... Uh, a great, um, a great flight case, a great Colton case, um, custom made for the instrument, so it fits right in, and it's super strong. I've never had had any issues, um, but it is. It's always a little bit scary when you, you know, hand off your guitar and and um, yeah, and and climate climate can change things. So sometimes I have to, you know, just um, get used to get used to how it feels when I get to a new place. Get used to any possible possible changes. But also, this Benedetto is such an incredible instrument that um, it travels so well. So there's there's really nothing ever. Um, you know, I've just never had any any issues. It's actually really incredible. Very lucky. So yeah. It is frigid, but my 16B is great. And um, yeah, that's my answer to that question. Nice. All right, we've got one more tune for you this, um, this episode. Oh, I wanted to mention, yeah, I've got, pass those over, and the shirt as well. I have got some merch. Um, if you want to check out the records Will was mentioning earlier, um, I've got two of them on my website for sale. Um, this one is Golden Hour. It came out in 2022. And this is the most recent one. Um, Sonic Bouquet came out just a few months ago. Um, both albums have incredible bands on them. Quincy Davis on drums. Uh, Rodney Whitaker on bass on both of them. Um, Randy Napoleon, Will Bonas, Virginia McDonald, John Gordon. So incredible musicians on these. I've also got uh, some other merch, some a Jocelyn Gould t-shirt. I was actually wearing this earlier. Uh, Jocelyn Gold t-shirt um, and yeah thank you so much everyone for your support and for watching the show for subscribing it's just um, so cool it's been so fun so we're going to finish off with a tune that I recently wrote this has not been recorded yet this is called Early, Early Bird 
and I wrote it, um, yeah, just a few months ago. So this is Early Bird. Hope you enjoy. One, two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh.
Thank you so much. This is Will Vaughness, Julian Bradford, Kevin Waters. My name's Jocelyn Gould. Thanks so much for watching the second episode of the Jocelyn Gould Show. Um, we will see you next time. Thank you. Take care. All right. All right. 57 uh, minutes. Oh, 58 uh, minutes. Yeah, we did. We only restarted, so that was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. Close. Oh, um, I, I wouldn't mind redoing that one. the first one and this one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>